Aleluya. You're being blessed, saints. Putting on the new man. Putting on the new man. Putting on the new man. Bless the Lord. Amen. I need your undivided attention this morning. I believe we have reached the heartbeat of this conference. This is it right here. It's the heartbeat. Putting on the new man. Can I have another microphone and start? Can you read for me? <clears throat> Glory to God. Can I have one of those mics over there, please? Oh, we got one? Okay, thank you. Amen. Yes. For many years, we here at Bible Teachers have enjoyed the fruits of apostolic order. Uh -huh. We have received fresh manna each time the Lord has brought us together. He never fails. He never fails to meet us. And some of you new people, I, I need you to understand that World Conference, School of the Prophets, Founders Week, these were not options for us. The Lord told us to be at those meetings. The Lord said he would give us fresh manna if we would come together. Glory to God. And God has never failed to do that. And because of that, we have grown. We have seen ourselves grow. We have continued to grow in the Lord. Amen? Mm -hmm. These truths have changed our lives, and mm -hmm. they have caused us to desire holiness. Amen. I remember the definition God gave me for perfection. I choose to obey God in all things at all times. Amen. Now, that's, that's, that's what God told me to say. That was the definition God gave me. He's, you know, people are so hung up on perfection and say we're not perfect. Glory to God. But God said perfection is just choosing to obey me. Just choosing to obey me. If we can choose to obey him one day, we can choose to obey him every day. Isn't that right? Praise the Lord. So perfection is simply choosing to obey God in all things at all times. Amen? Mm -hmm. It is a very profound definition, and it did help many to come to belief. But the truth is we did not fully understand why perfection was not only a possibility, but also a mandate from the Father. Mm -hmm. In the previous chapters, we learned that the soul was taken out of the flesh through the miracle of circumcision. We also discovered that circumcision was the death of the old man, the body of sins. As many of us that received Christ were baptized into his death. All right, now, we learned last night and, and yesterday about circumcision, right? And we learned that the death, of the, old, the, the, the death of the old man, circumcision was caused the death of the old man because the soul was taken out of the flesh. It was taken away. It was separated from the body, right? And the old man died. That's a... a Spiritual slow motion of salvation. We were baptized, taken out of the flesh, and put in the spirit. Now, this is most important if you're going to ever live holy. We were placed in the spirit. And if you read the New Testament, it constantly, constantly talks about us being in the spirit, being in the spirit. If you live in the spirit, if you walk in the spirit, glory to God, amen. We're seated with him in a heavenly place, amen. 
That's the soul now. And I needed you to understand. I was trying to drive the point home. Glory to God. I was trying to drive the point home that the soul no longer resides in the flesh as it did as in Adam. As it did before it met Jesus. That is crucial to walking in the spirit. That's crucial knowledge to walking after the spirit. If I can get my, 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 my people back up here, uh, Daniel, Kareem, um, please. And um, where's my Jesus? Who is my Jesus? Sound to me like you glad Byron not here. Glory to God. Amen. I want you to see. Come on, Jesus. Amen. And this is this is dramatic. It, I'm 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 being very dramatic because I want you to see. I just I really want you to see. Amen. How this soul. And this is the body. That God now, in circumcision of the flesh, uh, there was one, one um, we need a, need a bad man. Nobody volunteering for that. <laughs> Praise you, Jesus. Come on, Yannick. <laughs> You're elected. Praise the Lord. I want you to remember that just as there was a body, a soul, but there was the spirit of iniquity living in here and had the soul in captivity, remember? Soul was in captivity. And this spirit started something working in this body. This is very crucial. Glory to God. This is very crucial. And, I, and, and if I'm being, you know, repetitive, Glory to God. Redundancy is good. Amen. Glory to God. I want you to always remember. Glory to God. And, and this, this is going to help pastors when they're trying to bring people to salvation. Amen. This spirit, according to Ephesians 2, is the spirit of, of uh, disobedience that was working. It was the spirit of Satan that was working in us before we met Jesus. Is that right? This thing was in us. And, but I need you to remember its effect on us. I want you to remember the effect that it had. First of all, it kept the, the, the soul in captivity. The conscience was full of dead works and sins. Even our conscience, which is the spiritual part, is in the soul, right? And then the body now, the body had... had the law of sin and death working in it. In the, in the seventh chapter of Romans, the testimony of the unsaved man says that <clears throat> he delighted in the law of God after the inward man. That's this man, the soul right here. In other words, understand something. Understand this. I want you to see this like this. This body has no will of its own. has no will. Stop giving it its own will. The will is spiritual. The will is here. The soul is, is, is who wills to do. Are you hearing me? When, when your brain is functioning and thinking thoughts, guess who initiates the thinking? The soul. Are, are you hearing God? The soul simply uses its body to express itself. The body is not, doesn't have any desires. The soul is what creates the desires. The soul is the one that enjoys the pleasures of this world. 
the, the soul says, I have a body. And when I engage in <clears throat> eating something that's good, I'm so glad I have a body that I can taste. <laughs> my taste buds are not in the soul. My taste buds are in my body. But my body belongs to me. Come, come on. Amen? Are you, are you understand? <clears throat> the body doesn't say, I want that. I want that. The soul says, I want that. I want that. When the body is physically damaged, it's the soul that mourns. When the body is hurting, it's the soul that's hurting. When there's something physically done to this body, the pain. You, are you understanding what I'm saying? Because this is his body. Amen? Are you, are you hearing me? This is his body. So he feels everything that happens to it. If he can, if he can taste, when it gets cold, he feels cold. When it's hot, he feels hot. Hmm? Hello? Glory to God. So this is his body that he expresses himself with. Glory to God. But now we have made the mistake, the error. The church has erred in thinking this body has its own will, its own desires, its own likes and dislikes. The soul is the one determining whether I like something or not. Hmm? Are you hearing God? You reach out. I can reach out and touch. Who discerns? Who, who decides what I'm going to feel? The, the hand just, I told the hand to touch. But now, the soul is the one to decide whether it's benevolent or whether it's lascivious or erotic or whatever. The soul is the one that makes that decision. Are you hearing God? The hand just doing what you told it to do. You told it to touch. Are you all hearing God? Hmm? Hmm? The soul is the one that has intelligence. The Bible calls it divine intellect. Are you hearing God? That's what God breathed into us. It's called inspiration. <sighs> breathed in knowledge. The soul has breathed in knowledge. Are you hearing God? Are you hearing? Amen. He has intelligence. Glory to God. And so he's the one that, that he, he got his body. He can take his body over here and enjoy a, a day at the beach. He can take his body over here and go. I, glory to God. I, I had the privilege of, of going to the, to, the, to the spa the other day to, 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 to get a, my nails done and, and my toes done and and my back was being massaged while I'm in the chair and, and stuff. And I was just enjoying it. I was enjoying it. Me. I'm a soul. <laughs> yeah. hmm? The Bible said my soul longs. Hello? Uh, am I making a, my point here? Okay, all right. This is so crucial. This is so crucial to belief. Because belief means to commit to what you trust. To commit to the thing that you trust. To commit to God. Amen? To commit to the trust you have in God. So if you understand what is going on here, you might be more inclined to believe. To commit. Amen? All right. So now... What is God going to do here? What is, what is God going to do? What is salvation doing? What, how, how far have we gone so far? Soul cried out. We, we went through that. Soul cried out for deliverance. The soul says, please save me. Right? Soul cries out, save me. So God said, okay, take the soul out of here. Take the soul out. Put the soul. Come over here, soul. Amen. Put the soul over here. Come over a little bit further. Put the soul in Jesus. This is his heavenly place. Jesus, Christ, Holy Ghost, same thing. Right? Seated with him. 
devil can't touch this no more. See, he came in and took over, put him in captivity, started the law of sin and death working in the flesh, and no, no, and now, 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 now. This is what I want you to understand. While he was in this body, he created lust in the body. If he hadn't been in there, the body wouldn't have no desire. You understand? This body is controlled by a higher power than it. Yeah. It's controlled by a spiritual power. Yeah. Are you understanding me? It's controlled by a spiritual power. So now, glory to God, this, this, this iniquity, spirit of iniquity, created lust in the flesh. Jesus, remember he said, John 8, 42, you, 8, 44, you of your father, the devil, the devil, and it's his lust, he's creating lust in your members. Now, this is the thing that you got to understand. This, this spirit of iniquity is so powerful that he got a law working in the members. He's got a law working. That law of sin and death is working in the members. He's got this law working, glory to God. This law is creating lust, evil concupiscence, it's called, in the members. So the soul says, I, I understand the Ten Commandments, and I delight in them. But there's, just like I delight in the law of God, and I want to do it, but there's another law. I find another law, Romans 7, working in my members. In my members, in my flesh, in my body. There's things working in this body. There's something going on in my flesh. Something that, that the soul is saying, something that, that I didn't even want to do. That's what the soul is saying. That I didn't even want, so some things I didn't even want to do. Why? He's, he he want to do it. And he's more powerful than the soul. He wants, he wants to... to he wants to take this body into degradation. He wants to take it into homosexuality. He wants to take it into lasciviousness. He wants to take it into fornication. He wants to take it into drug addiction. He wants to take it into drunkenness. You understand what I'm saying? He, he, it's his lust. And he created it in my members. So the soul, come back a minute, soul. The soul is saying, when I want to do good, I, when I want to do good, I try to do the right thing, but there's a law working in me, and it's more powerful. And so, so what is happening here? I, I, I'm, I'm trying to think of a word. What is happening here with the soul? The soul is saying, the soul is saying something like, I did wrong. I disobeyed God. But I didn't realize. I didn't realize the consequence. I didn't realize that, that I was opening the door. Yeah. This Adam. I didn't realize I was opening the door for something that's more powerful than me. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? I didn't, I, I, yeah, yeah. Uh, I disobeyed. See, God told him, say, Adam, if you touch that tree, you're going to die. You, you're going to die. D die meant separation from God. You're going to be separated from me if you, if you eat of that fruit. And Adam, but, you know, we didn't realize that this thing here was coming. It, it, it wasn't just we disobeyed, the, the devil was over here enticing, and then... And then now the soul, the, the soul says, take the fruit and eat it, man. And so the, the, the body reaches out, gets the fruit, eat it. Now, if that was all that's happening, but, okay, maybe I could repent. Maybe I could, you know, 
do something. I know I disobeyed God, but I didn't realize that this, 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 this thing that was crawling around in that tree, he was coming to live. He was, he was coming to live. That the moment I disobeyed, I opened the door for that spirit to come in now and live. Remember the serpent? Remember the serpent? Now, the serpent was, you know, the serpent could open his mouth and start talking. Who do you think was talking through the serpent? And the serpent used to stand upright. Mm-hmm. And the serpent started talking. And so we are told that when God came down to deal with this situation, God said, you can sit there. God said to the serpent, your seed. Told Mary, said, your seed shall bruise head but he identified the serpent as having a seed in him hello the serpent was one of God's creatures glory to God he was one of God's creatures and and was but the serpent had been talking to the wrong person the serpent had been listening to the devil and the, and that serpent apparently opened the door for the for the devil to come in and live in him so Satan was in that serpent, glory to God, and now Satan, see, Satan says, now, if I could just get him to disobey God, if I could just get Adam to disobey God, if I can get Adam, see, this is what Satan knew, if I could get Adam to disobey God, I can live in Adam. I'll take the whole human race down. I'll take them out because, because, I'm going to be the seed in him, and, and, and I'm going to be that spirit in him, and I'm more powerful than he is. Remember, Satan is an angel. I'm more, my spirit is more powerful than him, so I'm going to get in his seed so that every child he have from now on will have my seed in him. Are you hearing God? That's why every child after Adam was born in sin, shaped in iniquity. Now, what does that shape in iniquity mean? That means that every child was born after Adam, his body had iniquity in it. That's the shape of iniquity. Shape of iniquity refers to the flesh. What does that mean? That means the law of sin and death was working in our members, causing us to desire sin causing us to crave sin in our body. We crave that feeling. We craved the pleasures of the world in our flesh. The soul now, glory to God, was craving that sin that was in the flesh. Are you understanding? Hello? You all understand so far? Amen. This is, this is most crucial. So now it craves it because he's living in it. And he's the one that's causing the desire. He is now, he's now creating lust in this body. He's creating it. And the soul is helpless. The soul is helpless. The soul I, I want to I do what's right. And, you know, I, 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 wanna, I don't really want to hold any, anything against anybody. And, but, but this spirit right here, it's more powerful. It's more powerful. Jesus called him a strong man. A strong man. And, and he made it clear that if you're going to deal with this, you got to first deal with him. You got to deal with him. Because as long as he's in there, this will never, ever be able to be sanctified. Are you hearing me? This will never be able to be sanctified as long as he's in it. Another thing. When Adam was created, Adam and Eve, they were innocent, right? But once this spirit came to live in 
Adam, creating the motions of sin in the flesh, creating the law of sin and death operating in the flesh, this spirit caused a nature change. Human beings were innocent. They were holy, clean. The flesh got tired. <laughs> so, but this man, this, 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 the spirit of Satan created new nature. So it became the nature of the flesh to be sinful. I need you to understand that. The nature of the flesh was sinful. That's why the scripture tells us Jesus came in the likeness of sinful flesh. Huh? All flesh was sinful. And so Mary couldn't, couldn't produce a body that had that, that, that atomic sin in it. That's why G the father overshadowed her and cleansed that flesh, made sure that that spirit of life was in that flesh, Holy Ghost. So now this provided new nature, satanic nature. And I'm going to fast forward a little bit. Do you think now this body with satanic nature in it, you think God's going to live in that? Do you think God will put himself in, in something that has the nature of Satan in it? That's going to be his house. That's going to be his, his tabernacle. That's going to be the thing he says is my holy temple. <laughs> He's not going to do that, right? All right. Well, are we in agreement with that? Because if you're in agreement with that, then you can't believe in dual nature. <laughs> Come on. You can't believe in dual nature. Uh, hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Because if you believe in dual nature, then you're saying this. You're saying the Holy Ghost and the devil live in this flesh. And, and, and you know what you're saying? You're saying that that he's more powerful than him because he keep him sinning. Yes. Wow. Come on, that's what you're saying. If you believe in dual nature, if you believe it's because of your body, your flesh, and like preachers say, as long as you're in the flesh, you're going to sin. So that means that even though God is in here, as long as I'm in here, I'm going to sin. Why? Because he's still in there, got emotions of sin, working in my members, creating lust in my members, glory to God, and I still can't help myself. Does that make sense? See, the truth makes the lie ludicrous. It makes it ludicrous. So God said, I'm not, I'm not dealing with this. I'm not living in there. No, I'm not, I'm not going. I'm not, I'm not. No, 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 no. I'm God. I'm a God that can tell the sun to stand still. I'm a God that Tell the ocean, stop right there. I'm a God that set the compass of the earth on its axis. And you think I have to settle for living inside of something that is full of sin? Hallelujah. I don't think so. Are you, are you hearing God, saints? You learning? All right. So, soul cries out. God said, okay, soul. I got you. Soul is taken out, placed in the spirit. This is crucial. Let me sit down a minute. This is crucial. This is the Holy Ghost. Soul is in the spirit. He's seated with Christ in a heavenly place. This I want you to remember. 
there's only one way the soul is removed from this place. And that's in reprobation. To be a reprobate means that God throws him back. Reprobate means cast away or to throw back. That's what it means. It means to be a castaway or to throw back. So the only way the soul can be taken out of the spirit is if God turns that man over to reprobate. That means God has cast him away. That's what Paul was saying. I don't want to preach to others and I myself be a castaway. Are you hearing God? Castaway means he's thrown back. What is, what is he thrown back to? Thrown back into the flesh. Taken out of the spirit. Thrown back into the flesh. You're on your own now. When you die, you go into hell. You, don't, you can't even repent anymore. You cross the line. You hear God? That's reprobate. That means reject. Reprobate means reject. Rejected by God. Are you, are you, are you hearing it? Rejected by God. He's a reject. He's thrown back into the flesh. Do what you want to do now. You do whatever you want to do now. Do whatever you want to do. You can't even, you, there's no more salvation for you. I had you. You crossed the line, and I threw you back. Scriptures say they were reprobate concerning the faith. That means cast away from the faith. You know, I don't want to get God that upset with me. Amen. I don't want him to get that upset with me now. And throw me back. Don't throw me back. Whoop me, beat me, lock me up, whatever you got to do, but don't throw me back. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. You can put me in prison. Whatever God... Amen. Just don't throw me back. Don't, don't, don't reject me. Because even if you chastise me, that's going to only last for a season. At least I still got eternity to look forward to. Come on. Glory to God. So now, I, I, I'm trying to take my time. Glory to God. The plan, read right there, Star. The plan yes, yes, yes. was mm -hmm. for us to be witnesses and ambassadors of Christ. Okay. A witness is to openly profess the faith. Okay, wait a minute, hold it. Let me, let me, let me, let me finish getting rid of this, these, these people here that's supposed to don't. Did you go to bed last night? Kind of, huh? <laughs> kind of. They had you up all night. Praise you, Jesus. All right. Now, Solon cried out. Okay, soul. Get in Christ. And as I was saying, I want you to see this. He's not coming out of here. This is his place. He's seated with Christ in a heavenly place. He's not moving. He's not going anywhere. Hello? And he is there. He got, a, he got a responsibility, right? We'll talk about his responsibility later. You can sit down now. But now, what about this? Because remember now, the Lord purchased this body with his blood. That's what the scripture teaches us, right? So now when the soul comes out, we find out that that this, this thing here, he got to go too. If God is ever going to use this, he got to get rid of this. Is that right? Yes. So circumcision, what did they do? They cut the foreskin, didn't they? Glory to God. The unclean, glory to God. Take off the unclean part, the thing that made it unclean. This is what made us unclean. So now this got, there's got to be a circumcision here. This got to be cut away. So this is evicted, taken out of the flesh. And so when it's taken out, flesh, flesh completely dead now. 
Thank you, sir. He been waiting to do, he been waiting for me to get to that part. <laughs> he, he's been waiting on that one. Okay. Yes, thank you. So he's dead now. Whew. He's dead. He's dead. Romans 6, and I believe it's the third verse. Somebody get that. I didn't realize it until God explained this thing to me. I didn't realize until he explained this thing to me that atonement, that this verse is, is going to explain atonement even, even clearer. Romans 6, make sure I got my right verse. Yes. Start at the, at the, at the, at the uh, first verse. Keep it in context. First. first verse. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Uh-huh. God forbid. Wait a minute. Now, God is forbidding sin. This is a long chapter, Saints, so. Uh, Y'all don't mind if I take my time, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, amen. Uh, God forbidden sin. I want you to keep that in mind. Now, he has the audacity. He has the audacity. Father God has the audacity to say, I forbid you to sin. I forbid it. That means I'm not in agreement with any sin. Right? I'm not in an agreement with any sin. I forbid it. Point blank. I don't think that needs a whole lot of explanation. Shall we continue in sin just so that grace can abound? He said, he said, I forbid that. Don't you tell me about no grace. Grace brought you to me. But when I got here, you're supposed to stop sinning. Come on. Because I'm here, you can stop sinning. You, you, you hear him? He said, so I forbid it. I forbid it. I forbid it. And I don't care who, who, who said anything different. I say no. That's what God is saying. No, 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 no. No, no. No sin. Somebody said, no sin. None. Don't tell me grace got you covered. I don't want to hear that. Grace what got you saved. Huh? Obedience is what's going to get you in. Come on, come on, are y'all hearing God? No, 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 no. And you know what? As, as sons of God, we got to be able to stand up and say, no. I don't care who teach it. I don't care if it's your favorite preacher. Glory to God, say, no. God forbid us to sin. And God is not, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Glory to God. God is not sympathetic about sin. There's no sympathy. And I'll show you why in a minute. I'll show you why in a minute. It's dead. This body is so dead. You know, you know how he is? He's just like Adam was before God breathed into him. He dead now because the spirit of iniquity is gone. He's just a lump of clay. He's dead. You getting, you getting this, Tanya? He dead. He's just a lump of clay. So now, God says, but I purchased him. Now read this next verse. You're in Romans 6. Right. God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? All right. Now notice what he said. How? 
How can we who are dead to sin live any longer in it? He's asking a question. How can you do it? See, I, 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 um, I got to do something here. I got to preach from the spirit. I can't preach from the flesh. I got to preach like I'm preaching to saints. Not sinners. I got to preach to saints. The church is saints. Sanctified. Holy. Holy Ghost filled. I can't preach like I'm preaching to sinners of, of trying to get saved. I'm talking to saints. The Bible is written from the position of the spirit, not the flesh. It makes no provisions for the flesh to be preached from the flesh. So if there's, if, if, if there's any offense with this, it's going to be because you're in the flesh. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Romans 3, 24 and 25 that Christ died for the sins that were in the past. Are y'all hearing God? He not, you can't say, you see, they say, well, Christ died for sins, past, present, and future. Right. So he, he, he all covered. Let's read that. Let's, let's read that. Romans, what, 3 and, tw and 24 and 25. Being justified freely by his grace through redemption that is in Jesus Christ or Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are what? Pass. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. See, let me show you something. If Christ died for sins that are past, present, and future, in the sense that I can do whatever and still make it in. That's what we're talking about. Uh -huh. I can live like I want to. If that's so, then where, does, where is there any space for reprobate? Why does God caution us about becoming a reprobate? That means, glory to God, you have sinned, you have, you have dishonored God, and, and, and he's now rejecting you. If Christ died for, for all that stuff you're going to do, how could God reject you? There could never be a rejection. Come on, saints. Are you hearing God? Huh? Why would Paul be worried about being a castaway? If he could, if he could commit a sin and Christ has already paid for it, we wouldn't have to worry about doing anything. Come on. We wouldn't have to worry about being obedient. Because whatever I do is under the blood. Come on now. This is foolishness. And we're not going to go there. We're not going to believe that. That's the lie. That's the lie. And it don't agree with your spirit. It doesn't even agree with your spirit. It just sounds like something wrong with that. Are, are you hearing God? Are you hearing God? Are you hearing him? Okay. Take me back. Six. He asked a question. How can we, who are dead to sin, live any longer therein? How can we do it? How can you do it? How can you, if you are dead, if you dead, 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 How are you going to sin? If the body is dead to sin, how are you going to live in sin any longer? Let me show you what he means here. 
Read the next verse. Know ye not that so know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Uh oh. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Preachers, teachers. This is the explanation of that. Anyone that received Christ was baptized into his death. I really thought I understood that. So God said, no, you don't. You don't understand. I really thought I understood how can we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? I thought I understood that. God said, no, you don't. You got some truth. You got the truth, but you don't understand it. You preached it because I was getting scared. I said, Lord, did I preach something wrong? He said, no, you preached the truth, but you don't understand what you're preaching. I said, okay. <laughs> then show me. He said, now, whew, I'm trying to keep from going ahead of myself, but I don't see how I can Avoid it. That body is dead. That body dead, right? It's dead. Has no more sin consciousness. No more sin in its members. No law of sin and death in it. Just dead. Remember when Jesus was on the cross? He died. Didn't he die? And where was his body? Lying in the tomb. It was lying in the tomb, wasn't it? There was no spirit in it. He said, into thy hand I commit my spirit. Into your hand, God, I, gi I give you my spirit. Hmm? Hello? So the body was where? In the tomb, dead, no life in it. Jesus had told him, said, now, you, you can kill this, this, this tabernacle. You can destroy it, but I'll raise it up in three days. It's dead, though. Somebody say, it's dead. It's dead. It's dead. It's dead. This is the atonement. What does atone mean? To be one with it. To be at one with the sacrifice, doesn't it? Is that what atonement means? So now, it, the soul is out of that body. The body can't live without a spirit in it. Right? Wasn't this, this was Mr. Daniel. No, Mr. Kareem. You the owner of that body. That, you were the owner, right? Was not he the owner? Yeah. This is what happened. Watch this. When he, when he cried out for salvation, he said, Lord, save me. He said, okay, into thine hand I commit my spirit. Into thine hand I commit my spirit. Everything Jesus did was a forerunner for us. He's an example in every sense of the word. Jesus went through everything that we go through as saints in salvation. We committed our soul to God. Did we not? Into his hand. We say, we trust you, Jesus. Faith came by hearing. We trust you with our soul. Glory to God. We trust you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When does, when does who? Oh, <laughs> okay. That's a good one there. Question is, 
when does generational curse come in? After salvation. A good question. Because I see preachers telling saints they got a generational curse on them. Kareem is dead. Where the curse at? How can there be a curse on him? Is he dead? That man is dead. That's the old man. Huh? We'll get more into that later. But into thine hand, I commit my spirit. That's the evidence of belief, commitment to God. So God said, you believe I can preserve your soul? You believe I can preserve your soul? Okay. Let me show you atonement then. Then that means that you can be at one with my death. In order for me to preserve you, remember now, you got to be, you got to die. Because the soul that sinneth must die. Right? So, but the scripture says, because we believe. We were baptized into his death. Now, let me show you what this means, because several things are going to come to light here. Justification. Let me show you what justification really means here. Jesus got this. This ain't going nowhere. And the devil can't touch it. You're not coming in here. You can't touch this. This is buried in him. Buried in the spirit. Somebody say, he's secure. He is secure. He is in the spirit. Glory to God. And Satan ain't coming in here to do nothing. He can't come in and put him into captivity anymore. Now, this is what I want you to see. The spirit. He lives here. He is clothed in the spirit. That's what baptism is. He's totally submerged, buried in the spirit. Right? This is his home, his heavenly place. So what about that? Now, but people know Kareem by that. And Jesus needs, God needs Kareem to be a witness of this operation. It, wasn't, that, wasn't, that, wasn't that the plan? For Kareem to be a witness of salvation, of the power of Jesus Christ, the power of our God. So now, watch this. Jesus says, uh, Kareem, I'm going, I'm, I'm a, see that body right there that, that's, that's yours, that, that your body? I'm going to raise it up. I'm going to raise it up. But as far as you are concerned, it's dead. You, you got that? It is no longer for your pleasure. You reckon it is dead. So now I'm, I'm cautioning you because I'm going back in there and I'm taking you with me. I'm going back in, and I'm taking you with me, but I'm telling you, Kareem, it's no longer for your pleasure. Kareem, trust me on this one. Don't love the world and other things that's in the world. Kareem, keep your eye single now. Keep your eye on my purpose, because if an eye be single, your whole body that you're getting back in is going to stay full of light. But if your eye is not single and you look in the world, glory to God, you're going to let darkness back into your body. Do you see that? So for you, Kareem, this body is dead to sin. I want you to reckon it as dead. The whole while you in it, you reckon it as dead. Because what that does, as long as you reckon it as dead, you are a partaker of the atonement. 
You, that means that you are dead with Christ. Glory to God. Come on, somebody. Do you see? Do you see? Do you, see, do you, see, do you understand this? Do you see? I don't know what I'm doing. God, help me here. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. Glory to God. So I'm going back. I'm, I'm, I'm coming back in. Kareem, I'm taking you with me. Because I need a witness. I need you to be the explanation. I need you to explain to folks. Because see, they, they don't know me, but they know you. You got to tell them what happened. You got to be my ambassador. My representative. You got to be the spokesman here. Hmm? To explain things. To get me some more sons. So Kareem, only way you can do that you got to stay in obedience. You got to stay in obedience. So now what happens? Kareem, Jesus, the Bible says, read that verse. We were baptized into his death and then what? Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. Into death. This is the death of the old man. This is the putting off of the body of sins. When that old man, when we were separated from the old man, we put off. We put him off. That's the putting off of the body of sin. We were separated from it. We put it off. Put it off. Off. You hearing God? So now... We bear with him in baptism into his death and that like as Christ was raised up from the dead. Now, just like God raised Jesus from the dead, that body that was in the tomb. Remember that one? How did he get him up? The same spirit, Holy Ghost, raised that body up. Did it not? Read. Even uh, he was, Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father. Even so, we also should walk in newness of life. For, now, oh, go ahead. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, okay. we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Now, this is what you got to see. Christ was raised from the dead out of that tomb, right? When God separated this, sanctified this flesh, the Spirit of God raised it up again. God raised it. He raised it up for his use. The body of Christ. It's the body of Christ now. He's telling Kareem, I know that's your body but I purchased it for my use, right? I don't want you now, watch this. When people see you, when the devil look at you, the devil say, how can he live? How can he live? Listen to me. How can, how can that man live? He's telling God, how can, how can that man live? God say, he was baptized into my death, into the death of Jesus. And because he was baptized into his death, the atonement, huh? and because Jesus raised this body, Watch this. Jesus Christ, the Spirit of God, raised this body up. He now is justified to be in it. <laughs> we got to see justification. Because see, ju who, who is, who, the world don't care nothing about that. Who, 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 who going to deal with that? The devil. The devil going to say, that man don't have no right to live. He was a sinner. He, he, he was a sinner. How you gonna, what, what's, what's going on here? God said, well, let me, he said, didn't he say, I want to show principalities and powers my manifold wisdom. 
God is saying it's lawful for him to live. It's lawful for him to live because I baptized him into my death. I baptized him into Jesus' death. I planted him right in the death of Jesus Christ. He is walking around. He knows that this body is dead to sin. It died to sin once and for all. It is dead to sin. He reckons it as dead to sin. Glory to God. And it's now alive unto Christ. This, this body lives because of Christ. It's not living because of him. That's the justification. We justify it by Jesus. Jesus said, I'm the strong man. You got a problem with me raising it up? I'm the one raised it up. I'm the one got it living now. See, before, it was a living soul. <laughs> Look at God. That was a living soul. The soul had it alive. But Jesus said, I'm a quickening spirit. I got it alive. So yes, devil, it's justified to be alive. This body can live again because I raised it. I, I'm the one that's sinless. Come on, somebody. I'm the one that's sinless. I have already proven to be sinless. I have walked the earth 33 and a half years and never sinned. I have died on the cross and paid for his sin. Glory to God. I am justified to raise this body back up because he believed in me. He, and, 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 and he committed his soul to my keeping. And you can't, take, you can't touch that. He told me to keep his soul. So his life is hid in me. He is in me and I'm in him. Just like Jesus was in God and God was in Jesus. Do you, are you seeing this? He's saying, when the devil say, well, wait a minute. How can he be? Jesus said, I brought it back alive. You got a problem with that? There's no sin in this. There's no sin in this. This body has died and come back alive again with no sin. It's sinless. It's sinless flesh. It's sinless flesh. There's no law of sin and death working in it. Romans 8. Romans 8 and 1. Therefore, there is therefore now no what? Devil, you can't condemn this. To those who walk after the flesh, after the spirit, and not after the flesh, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit, there's no condemnation. In other words, he's not walking after the flesh. The flesh is not, <laughs> he doesn't have this flesh alive. This flesh is walking after the spirit. The spirit is what's got it alive. Come on, somebody. Are y'all hearing God? So it's justified. He's justified. Because Jesus was sinless. And Jesus said, this is my body. I bought it. I bought this one. I paid for it with my blood. I paid the price for this. Hallelujah. And the fact that he trusted me, he committed his soul to me. You got a problem with that? Devil? You got a problem with him trusting me? Hallelujah. It's, it's justified for him to, tr to, to, to let me watch this now, because the devil always accuses her. It's justified that he's able to trust me and commit his soul to me because I died for him. I paid the price for him to live. Come, come on, somebody. I paid for his sin, and, 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 and he's trusting me to preserve his life. 
his, his life is preserved inside of me. And that's justifiable because I, he can trust me with it because I already paid the price for the sin. Are you hearing God? You understand this? You understand it? You understand it? You understand it? You getting this? It's going to come a little clearer. But I, I, I'm just trying to make sure you see the justification here for us living, for, this, for, this, for this, this body being back alive again. But I want you to see something. Remember now, I, I set some precedents here. He in the spirit. Notice he's not in the flesh. His life is hid in here. Jesus got this alive. This is the body of Christ. It's his body now. The temple of the Holy Ghost. Uh, the tabernacle of the living God. Are you hearing him? Now, do we see any sin anywhere here? No law of sin. Look at that, look at that second verse. For the, for the law of the spirit of life has made us free from the law of sin and death. Come on. You law, you, y'all, people that lawyers and stuff. Thank Kareem, ain't you a lawyer? You, 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 glory to God, he, he, he in law school. You know that once there's a law, it operates until there's another law that supersedes it. Hmm? That takes precedence. So the law of the spirit of life, this spirit here, just like Satan was in there creating lust in the members, now the spirit of life is in this body creating a desire for righteousness and holiness. Glory to God. That's why whenever you commit a sin, you feel condemned. You feel convicted. You know why? Because it's against your nature. It's against your nature. It's no longer your nature. It's no longer your nature to sin. That's why you feel so bad. Why are you feeling so bad about what you did? Glory to God, before we got saved, we didn't feel bad about that stuff. But now when we say, I don't care, you can just talk wrong to somebody. Glory to God, you feel bad. You snapped at somebody. You feel bad. You why? Because that's not your nature. It's not your nature. You're doing something that's not even you. That's not, that's not you. That's not, that's not who you are. That's not who you are anymore. There's a desire. The spirit of life is in this flesh now. How many? How, are, you, are you saved? You got the Holy Ghost? Do you crave sin? You got the Holy Ghost? Do you, do you crave sin? No. Huh? Is, this, is, are we, is it natural for us to sin? How many of us with the Holy Ghost just can't help ourselves? Just want to sin, just, just got to sin. Not our nature. It's not your nature. And let me tell you something. The devil is a liar. It's not the nature of the flesh to sin. It's not the nature of the flesh anymore to sin. It's not the nature of the flesh anymore to sin. Because if it was, then this, then the, the scripture, there's a scripture, there's a scripture that says, is Christ the minister of sin? You know what he's saying? He's saying, if you got the nature to sin, then Christ must be the administrator of sin. Because when the, when the spirit of iniquity was living in this body, he, 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 he started a craving for sin. So you're saying that Christ is doing the same thing? Because the fact that Christ is in this flesh, he's the one that's providing the new nature. This is the divine nature. Are you, are you hearing God? Read it. Romans 6 and 6. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. Old man? Remember he was dead? Didn't the scripture say, reckon him as dead? Keep him dead. 
That's what mortify your members mean. Keep him dead. Mortify it. Huh? Don't, 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 don't allow him to rise up no more. Reckon him as dead in your own, in the spirit of your mind, your soul. Reckon him as dead. Mm -hmm. That the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Freed from sin? Wait a minute now. Who are we going to believe? Who are we going to believe? He said, reckon. Now let me show you what he's trying to show you here. He's telling the soul, reckon this body as dead to sin. You know what he's saying? It's not yours to use to fulfill the pleasures of this world. Reckon it not yours any longer to fulfill the pleasures of this world. You got in trouble once for doing it. Don't do it again. That's what he's saying. You already got in trouble once and was alienated from God. Now don't be stupid and do it again. He said, if I rebuild those things that were destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. I make myself one. I can't blame the devil. Come on now. I can't say there's something working in my members and all of that like it was before. No, I make myself a transgressor. Why? Because I'm rebuilding the things that God tore down, the things that God destroyed. I'm trying to rebuild them again. I am, now watch this here. Notice what she said. She said, Glory to God, that we should not be servants of sin, right? The Bible says, let me show you, when Kareem decides that he's peeping out here in the world and he wants something from out there in that world, this is what he does. I'm just paraphrasing this example. He steps here. It's called rebellion. It's called rebellion. See, Jesus is saying, I'm not going to force you to obey. I'm, don't, I'm not going to make you a robot. Because you got to prove yourself worthy of salvation. Not before you get saved, but after you get saved. You got to obey God. Now you say you couldn't before because you had the devil living in you. Well, he's not there anymore. So what's going to stop you from obeying now? Come on. I, 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 you got to prove that you'll obey because I've given you a second chance now. I've given you another chance. There's no, no, no spirit of iniquity in you. There's no motions of sin. There's none of that stuff that you can blame the devil on anymore. He's gone. And even I'm living in there. I have cleansed that flesh. I have the spirit of life working in this body. This body craves righteousness. This body has no more sin nature in it. It has the divine nature. But you done peeped. Come here, Keitha. You done peeped. And you seen something you want. Because you remember now fornication and what it felt like in the flesh. So now you peeped around here and seen something that you want. So now you're going to usurp authority. And now you're going to take Christ's body and join his members to a harlot. You're going to join the members of Christ to a harlot. It's not yours to do. You did that before. You did that before. I delivered you from that. 
You can't say this body craved that. No, you sold your quit. Don't lie. Don't say your flesh just, just couldn't help it. Just couldn't help it. You just a can't help it lie. He said, the soul, the body was doing fine. You, you peeped out there. You looked in the world. Your eye is no longer single. It's you looking in the world and you decided that there's something that in that world you want. And you made a conscious decision to join the members of Christ, the holy temple of God, to take it into fornication, the temple of the living God. He said, every other sin is without the body, but this one, you sin against your own body. You're taking the members of Christ and joining it. Do you, 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 you see what, what's happening here? This is called rebellion. And the Bible says rebellion is a sin as witchcraft. Why does he call it that? Why does he say it's a sin as witchcraft? You know why? Because a witch is Satan's servant. A witch is Satan's servant. And he said, every time you rebel against God, every time you rebel against God, you now yield in your members to sin. You become the servant of sin. You become Satan's servant. He says, don't you know that whomever you serve, you become a, a servant to that person? Whoever you yield your members to, glory to God, you become their servant? So you're rebelling against everything that God did. Everything that God did, you're rebuilding what he tore down, what he destroyed. You're making yourself a transgressor. Glory to God. He said, keep your eyes single. Keep your eyes single. Stay hidden. Listen to what he says and do. Do y'all have that? Thank you. <laughs> Fellas, y'all need to sit right here because I'm going to leave you in a minute. Okay. Okay. You got that? Okay. Round two. All right, let's go back into the study guide here. All right, a witness is supposed to be someone that, read that star, witness. Witness, to openly profess the faith mm -hmm. is a person who was present and saw an event take place the, uh, the evidence and proof of an event or to have personal knowledge of an event or change from personal observation or experience. Okay, now, a witness is someone that has a personal, personal knowledge of an event that took place or a change that took place. So, Kareem, Kareem is a witness now to what has happened here. He knows what's going on. He knows why he's changed. He's the only one that knows. Why? Because the kingdom of God doesn't come with observation. The only way, that, the, only way the world is going to see the kingdom of God is through us. The explanation we give them and through our lifestyle now. They see us living holy. They, and they want to know, well, what happened, to, what happened to Kareem? I remember when Kareem was this or that or all other. Glory to God. What happened to him? Kareem can tell him what happened. He's the witness. The scripture also says we're ambassadors. What is an ambassador? An ambassador is a servant. One, a servant. A servant. One who acts as a representative of another kingdom in a foreign land. Oh, wow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're ambassadors. We're in a foreign land here. This is not our home. We're we, we passing through here. 
Glory to God. This world is not our home. We, are, we live in the kingdom. What is the kingdom of God? The Bible says, glory to God, the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's where we live. We are in this world, but don't, don't fool yourself. We're not of this world. We are ambassadors representing another kingdom. We are here to tell you about this other kingdom. We're here to show you how to get into this other kingdom. Are you hearing God? Are you hearing him? Okay. We got that. Look at St. John 17. Hallelujah. Pray with strength in the Lord. 17 and 20. Neither pray I for these alone. Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he's praying just before the crucifixion. But for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Mm -hmm. I thank God that Jesus prayed for all of us who would have come to believe on him. That's right. That they all may be one. Uh-oh. As thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Now, Father, I want them to be one, as we are one. Okay. How were they one? He told us. I'm in you. And you in me. This is what Jesus is saying. Jesus, this was the body of Jesus. This was the soul of Jesus. Jesus said, I'm in you, Father, the Holy Ghost, Spirit of God. And guess what, God? You're in me. So do the same thing for them. Same thing you did for me, do it for them. So what did he do? He put the soul over here in the spirit and then put the spirit in the body. You need to be here. He put the soul in the spirit and then put the spirit in the body. So Jesus was living inside of the Spirit. That's why when, he, when Nicodemus was talking to him, he said, except you're born again, you can't see the kingdom. You don't know the kingdom is standing right here. You think this Joseph's son. Huh? You think this is Joseph's son. But you've been visited by the kingdom of God. Huh? Because I'm in God and God is in me. So now, Jesus walking around and his disciples were following behind him. And one day, one day, Philip say, uh, show us the Father. You keep talking about him. Hmm? Show him to us. Have I been so long with you and you don't know me? Who was that talking? The Father. He was in that body. And Jesus said, make them one, just like we want. But I want to show you something. I want to show you the miracle. What's the miracle? I want to show you the miracle. Salvation, good God about it. Watch God. Woo. Help me, Holy Ghost. <clears throat> Read the 22nd verse here on page 15 at the top of the page. Oh, okay. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them that they may be one, even as we are one. What glory did he have? The Holy Ghost. That's the glory of God. That's the Spirit of God. 
And he said, I gave them the same thing you gave me. Ooh-wee. He said, I gave them the same thing you gave me. Watch this. 23. I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one. Uh -huh. And that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Uh -huh. Father, I will that they also... Now he got another request. I like this one. He got another request of the Father. This, our Lord is praying here, and I think his prayers are guaranteed to be answered. <laughs> he says, I got, I, Father, I got another request here. I will also, I will also, I want, I want this to happen to me. Read. I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, mm -hmm. be with me where I am. Oh. That they may behold my glory. That they may do what? Behold, behold my glory. What does behold mean? See it. That they will see. My what? Glory. This is important, saints. Uh-huh. Which thou hast given me. Behold my glory that you gave me. How are they going to behold that? This is the prayer he prayed now. That the church would behold his glory. The glory that the Father gave him. Uh-huh. That, and and, and, and notice, notice what else he said. That where I am, that they, they'll be with me. Yeah. I want them with me. I want them with me. I want them with me. And I want them to be able to see the glory you gave me. Good God. Read. For thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. Now look at St. John 17, 1 and 5, and let's understand what he's talking about here. Read, Read it. These words spake Jesus uh -huh. and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Uh -huh. Glorify thy son that thy son also may glorify thee. The father is always glorified in the son. Are, are, you, are you hearing that? He said, now, Father, the hour has come. This is a prophetic prayer. He's, he's praying as if he's already been crucified and resurrected. That's how you got to read this. You got to read it from that perspective. He's praying like he's already been to the cross. The Bible said he looked beyond the cross and saw the joy that was set before him. Glory to God. And the joy that was set before him was us being with him, beholding his glory. Come on, somebody. Are you hearing God? So he not, he, he, he not focusing in on the suffering. He done already dealt with that. Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, your will be done. So I've dealt with that. I know I got to go to the cross. So let me go on. I got another request here. Hour has come for me to be glorified and for me to glorify you. Watch this. Look at this. As as thou hast given him power over all flesh. Oh, important here. That he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Uh-huh. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. Uh -huh. And now, O oh Father, Glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. All right. Glorify me with yourself. Jesus. Well, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus had a relationship with his father. He said, glorify me with your own self. Give me the glory that I had with you before the world was. What was the glory that he had with, with the father? He was, he was, he was the word of God in the Godhead. The word is spirit. The word is God. He's an, he was an omnipresent spirit. 
in the Godhead. He was God. He said, now give me that glory. Because the word was with God, but the word is God. They are one. And he is, he is the spirit of God that is omnipresent. He's in all things. He's everywhere. David said, if I make my bed in hell, he's there too. Amen? Now watch this. He said, I want those that you've given me to be with me, and I want them to behold my glory. I want them to behold it. I want them to behold it. I want them to see it. I want them with me so that they can see the glory that you have given me. I want them with me. Watch this here. Good God Almighty. The, verse number three. What does it say? And this is life eternal. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Verse number two. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. The first part of that verse is one of the most important things you'll ever learn in this conference. You have given me power over all flesh. Listen to him. You've given me power over all flesh flesh this is what that means glory to God you got to follow me here we, we had we had we had this the breaking point right here you don't get this you missed the whole conference shake yourself I know it's been a while shake yourself we 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 we, we about to land now we coming in for a landing Hallelujah. You got to fasten your seatbelts right here. Fasten your seatbelt, put your, put, your, put your tray tables in the up, put your tray tables up, lock your tray, tray tables, and put your seats in the upright position. Glory to God. Because we're about to come in for a landing. Hallelujah. Come here, Pastor. Pastor, Pastor, Pastor. 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 Bishop, listen to Jesus' prayer. You've given me power over all flesh. Power over all flesh. Let me tell you what he's saying. He's saying the same thing we just read in Romans 8. He's saying, all of these people here have accepted me. Every man that accepts me, I am the power over his flesh. Every one that I live in, I am the power over his flesh. I resurrected this. I live in this. He, 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 he don't have that kind of power, but I do. I got power over the flesh. I got power over all flesh. If I get in a body, no more law, sin, and death. No more motions of sin working in the members. If I get in, it's sinless. If I get in, it's got divine nature. I am the power, I got power over all flesh. So anybody that you put me in, God, I got the power over the flesh. So they don't have to worry about their body betraying them anymore. The soul don't have to worry that there's, that, 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 there's some, that, 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 that the body's going to start craving sin anymore because I'm the power in the flesh now. You, are you getting this? I am the power that's in the flesh. And as long as they obey me, I am the power in their flesh. Woo-wee. There's a scripture, I don't know where it says, somewhere, y'all find it. It says, it says, for you have not received the spirit 
of bondage again to fear. Come on, somebody. Do you hear what God's saying? He's saying, when I gave you salvation, glory to God, when I resurrected you, I didn't let that, that, put that, let that spirit, glory to God, of bondage come back in you. Glory to God, I came in. And I'm not sharing this house with no spirit of iniquity. Glory to God, you don't have the spirit of bondage where you got to fear, glory to God, sin anymore. You don't have to feel fear sin. You don't have to worry about your body betraying you anymore. Romans 8 and 15. What does it say? For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, mm -hmm. but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. You have received the spirit of God. I am. My daddy has given me power. Glory to God. I, Jesus, I got power over all flesh. When I get in him, I'm his power. When I get in this one, I got the power over his flesh. In him, I'm the power over his flesh. I'm the power over all flesh. Anybody I get in, I have the power over all flesh. You don't have to fear. You ain't got to fear. Hallelujah. 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 Now watch him. Ooh, that's just, that's just a half of it. Watch him. Watch him what he say here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Woo. Help me, God. Okay. Now, okay, turn to page 17. And for you that don't have a book, Ephesians 2 and 15. We got to explain this. You guys can sit on the stage. You can just sit there. Sit down and relax yourself. Hallelujah. All these pastors. Jesus, Jesus. Amen. Ephesians 2 and 15. See that one, two, three, four, fourth paragraph star. Having abolished. Not. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, 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 read that. Mm -hmm. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, mm -hmm. even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. Uh-oh. Here we go. Here we go. Abolished the enmity that separated us from God, but also that thing that separated us from each other. That thing that separated Jew from the Gentile. Now watch this. I need... Yes, come on, come on. Both of you, both of you. Come on. Hallelujah. Heather, right here, gentlemen. Ricky. Wow. There's a scripture in Ephesians. The one we just read was Ephesians 2, right? Yes. 
the Bible says he made one new man. One new man. One. No more Chinese. No more Lebanese. No more Bahamian. No more Jamaican. No more American. One new man. One new man. Now, this is what we got to see. This is why I'm going to show you why God hate iniquity. Show you why iniquity is so, so much hated by God. One new man. Look in. Help me teach this Holy Ghost. Look in Ephesians. Where's my? Fifth chapter, I believe. See if I can find it here. Thought I had it in the book here. Yeah. Okay. It's in the book, page 18. Thought I should. Y'all, y'all gotta pray now. Pray for God to sh show me how to. Minister this, okay? Amen. Look in, look in Ephesians 5 and 30. It's at the bottom of the page, star. Okay. For, for we are members of his body. We are members of what? <clears throat> Remember now, this is the mystery of Christ unfolded here. This is the great mystery. This is the one that the men of old couldn't discern. We are members of his body. Right? Now, when we were dealing with this man here, the Holy Ghost, and we say, this is Kareem's body. Right? This was Kareem's body, and we said, this is the body of Christ. Right? Because Christ raised it from the dead. And it's his body. Right? But this is his body too. And this is his body. And this is his body. And all of those are his body. Right? Right? Now, this is where the church error. The church look at that, and they see he's the body of Christ. He the body of Christ. He the body of Christ. He the body of Christ. No. All of this. Praise his name. Confirmation. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, God. All of this is one body. Now, this is what he's trying to show you. You may sit down. Let me, let me show you something here. The explanation is in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Help me, Holy Ghost, here. Uh, Corinthians 15. Hallelujah. Look at... Um, Let's look to the 
15 and 35. Go ahead. But some man will say, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Now watch this. See, Paul is preaching two messages here. He's preaching one message that deals with the rapture. But he's got another message that deals with salvation in the same chapter. Some man will say, some man. Because see, the natural man can't discern spiritual things. So men will listen to salvation and say, that sounds like foolishness. But some man will say, how are the dead raised? And what body does it come up with? Isn't that what it say? Read. Keep on. Mm -hmm. oh. Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickeneth, quickened, except it die. <laughs> and what else to say? And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bear grain, it, it may chance of wheat or of some other grain. Okay. When that body, when, when, when you plant something, you ever planted anything? You plant a seed. But what you get doesn't look like the seed. Come on. It don't look like the seed that you planted. You know, in fact, something, you can look at the, 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 the tree or whatever comes up and say, you don't even see a seed. It has no resemblance of the seed. Come on, you can't, even, you can't look at the tree and tell what the seed looks like. If you've never been into an apple, glory to God, you'll never see the seed. You can't look at an apple tree and know what the seed looks like. Are you, are you, are you understand? It looks totally different from what you planted. Now, this is important here. This is important. Jesus is saying this. Glory to God. He said, we are members of his flesh, of his body. We are the bone of his bone and the flesh of his flesh. What he's saying is, they planted me in the ground. I look like any other man. I just, right? But when I rose, when I rose, that body that was planted is not what was resurrected. Come on, somebody. Yes, we know the natural man, Jesus. He said, notice what he said. When he got up, he said, I got to go to my father. He said, because if I don't go, comforter can't come. I'm coming back. Didn't he say that? He said he was, he was coming back. He was coming back. He said, me and my father will come and sup with you. Didn't he say that? Glory to God. He was coming back, but he was coming back in the glory that he had with the father before the world was. He's coming back as a spirit. Come on, somebody. He's coming back to earth as a spirit. To get in, glory to God. Y'all don't hear me. He's coming back, glory to God, because the tree, the seed that was planted, got to germinate. And the tree couldn't come up unless the seed was planted. Bare grain, one seed. But when he comes up, this is what it looks like. He's saying, you're not an individual. There ain't no individuals here. This is the bone, your bone. Your bones are my bones. Your flesh is my flesh. Literally. 
literally. This is Jesus' flesh. These are Jesus' bones. This belongs to Jesus. He said, I'm in every one of them, and I got power over all the flesh. I got power over all flesh. I got power over all flesh. They don't have to worry. They don't have to worry because they don't have the spirit of bondage in them. They got me in them. Glory to God, I'm in them, and they're in me. Just like I was with my daddy. Glory to God, now they got to stay a one with us. Glory to God, I'm in them, they in me. Hallelujah. Didn't he say, make them one? He, there are no individuals in Christ. This is one body. This is a body. This is a body. Look at what he says. Look what he says. One new man. One. No white man. No black man. No Chinese man. No Lebanese man. No African man. Huh? One new man. He said from now on, don't see nobody after the flesh. Don't see nobody after the flesh. When you look at this, this is Christ. This is Christ. This is Christ. Are y'all hearing God? This is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He said, he says, I want y'all apostles to teach them. Teach them, perfect them. Until I see this body. Stand up in the fullness of the stature of the man Jesus. Having one mind, speaking the same thing. Every one of them should have the same sentiments about the same thing. No variations because Jesus is in every one of them. He says, I'm the power over this flesh. So don't tell me now it's working against you. <laughs> Are y'all hearing God? Yes, yes. Don't tell me it's working against you. This is one body. Now watch, now watch this now. He said, there's no sin in this. No devil. No motions of sin. This is sanctified. This is the temple of God. This is temple of God. He said, let me show you something here. You got to get this. You got to make sure you got this now. You got to make sure you got this. The scripture says, the scripture says, Colossians 3, 9, 3, 11. Lie not to one another. Don't lie to one another. Seeing that ye have done what? Put off the old man in his deeds and have done what? Put on the new man. Let me show you something. Sit down, fellas. Let me show you something. Remember, stand over to the side for a minute. Remember this man here? Remember this one? He was dead. This was the, this was the old man. Hello? This was the old man, right? This, this was Kareem's body that he sinned in. This was the body of sins, right? Hello? Yes. This was the body of sins. But when Kareem asked for salvation, the soul was taken out of it, right? But the soul had sinned too. So it had to be purged. 
Even the conscience had to be purged of sin and dead works. Remember? He had to be regenerated. Regime. Right? So now, this is a new creature. This is the new creature. If any man be in Christ, he's the what? This man is not in Christ. Christ is in this man. <laughs> Make sense? But this man is in Christ. He's a new creature. All things passed away. All things are new. Is that right? Glory to God, I got five minutes to tell you this. Amen. All things are new. And all things are of God. There's nothing human about this man anymore. He's one with God. He's one with God. Humanity is gone. Hallelujah. Are you hearing? There's no humanity in salvation. Are you hearing God? Now, but this man got to be a witness. He's got to be a witness of what has happened. And he's going back into a body. Right? A body that has been sanctified. Purged, circumcised. It's not the same person it was before. Guess what? Jesus is in it. No law of sin and death in it. Jesus is in it. So if Jesus is in it, Jesus, come here. If Jesus is in it, stay right over there just a minute. If Jesus get in here, this is a new man. That's a new man. That's the new man. So the scripture is telling the soul, put on this man. This the new man. The soul got to see, see. Put on means to be clothed in. The, the soul is being instructed. Come on. Put on this man. Reckon the old man as dead. Put on this new man. This new man that is sinless. This new man that has no law of sin and death working in him. Put on this new man. It's sanctified and it's holy. And every one of you. Put on this new man, this new man, glory to God. And when you put on this new man, you don't have to worry about your body betraying you again because this new man is, is raised in righteousness. It has the nature of God in it. One new man. There's a difference between the new man and the new creature. The new creature is what we have become. The new man is our home, our, the body that we live in. Come on, somebody. This the body. The new man is that body that Christ said, I have power over all flesh. He has power over this flesh. He has created the law of life working in the flesh. Clap your hands and tell him thank you. I make it blade? Okay, thank you. Ooh. Yes, it is. Cold. It's cold. Put some cold water in there. Yes, Doc. Just ask one question. Okay. The new man is where Christ has power over all flesh, and that's the spirit. Um, the new creature is when you add the soul. Is that when you add the soul? That becomes the creature. The soul acts to be saved. The soul acts to be saved, did it? Right. He wasn't just put in Christ. 
He was made one with Christ. He became a new creature. He's a new creature. He's a new creature that now puts on a new man. Right, okay. He's got a new, a, a new man. In other words, huh? the body is the new man. That's why he tell you to put him on. Clothe yourself in this new man now. And you don't have to be afraid of it. Because it's not, it doesn't have all that stuff working in it anymore. Are you understanding what I'm saying now? The body of Christ is a new man. He's not full of sin. He doesn't want to sin. He doesn't desire to sin. He's a new man. This is a new man. But flesh and blood doesn't inherit the kingdom. So he's still going back to the dust. He can't, he can't inherit the kingdom. Sooner or later, he's going back to the dust after you finish using him. After you finish using him to do the will of God, he's going back to the dust. Are you hearing God? And you'll get your real body. Because your real body is spiritual. You got another body waiting on you in the heaven. But down here, you got to walk in an earthen vessel. But I'm going to give you a new earthen vessel. I'm going to give you one that's been sanctified, one that's been purged, one that's been cleansed, one that has no sin nature in it. I'm going to give it to you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring you into the image, the same image that Jesus walked in when he was here. You're going to walk as in this. You're going to bear the image of that same Christ as, as he walked. He walked in a body that was sinless. You're going to walk in a body that's sinless. I'm going to give you a body. You got this. Pastor Joy. Saints, y'all got this. Do me a favor. Write down your question. Write down your question. Hallelujah. And I will answer them tonight. Praise you, Jesus. I will answer them tonight. Cause I know you got a lot of questions. But have I preached anything that didn't bear witness with your spirit? Hmm? Hmm? It bears witness with your spirit. Saints, I've been shouting ever since God been talking to me. I've been shouting. Now I know why we don't have to sin. Jesus said, if you just leave it up to me, you wouldn't sin. He has power over all flesh. I got power over your flesh. I, there's, no, there's no sin in this. I'm in it. There's no, no law of sin and death working in here. I'm in here. You can live free from sin. I made you free. Clap your hands and tell him thank you. Huh? Right now, not futuristic. Not futuristic. It's right now you're free from sin. As he is, so are we right now. Hallelujah. I'm going to uh, see no man after the flesh. Put these up here on, in my book for tonight. Praise the Lord. Saints, I hope you, uh, I hope you, I hope you all learn it. I told somebody this morning, I said, they said, what you wear in the church? I say, anything. As long as it's, long as it's comfortable. Because I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't dress up and preach this thing. Glory to God. I might look like a hag, but I, I still am anointed. I'm anointed. Praise you, Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Glory to God. So I just, you know, I, I hope you, you, you know, if you, if you brought some guests with, with you and they, they said, dog, that's your, that's your apostle? Tell them, yeah, she, she, yeah, she just slumming it right now. But, you know, when, when, she, when, she, when she get this message in us, then she'll, she'll do it up again. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. Saints, I love us so much. I love, I will, oh, I have come into such love for the body of Christ. I understand the body of Christ now. And I want all of us to understand it. I want us to fall in love with each other. Come on, saints, let's fall in love with each other. Let's just fall in love with each other. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Okay. All right. We're going to go a little bit further tonight. Amen. And uh, I think we're supposed to worship God not giving. Amen.
Pastor Sam, won't you come take our offering? Help uh, Deacon with the offering today. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. 